Uh, good evening, uh, everybody. I uh, hope everyone's okay uh, on this uh, on this Sunday. We've had some uh, pretty nasty weather over the last few days. Um, it's been either really hot or really windy or a combination of both, and that's been really difficult for the trees. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people out there have had some uh, disasters. I've known lots of people on the Discord group. Um, we have been sort of complaining about things falling over um, uh, and stuff like that. We've had a couple of disasters here. Um, so I hope everyone is, uh, and all their trees are all in one piece. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been a bit of a rush to set things up this uh, this evening. So if there's any issues with the sound uh, or anything like that, please do say. Um, I think we're okay. Uh, by uh, I did a quick test and it all sounded okay. So, But if not, uh, just let us know. Um, and I, I think that's about it really. Um, so just want to say thank you again to for everyone to for, for coming, uh, especially the donors. Um, these live streams are, are free, um, but we do ask you know if you find it really really useful uh, and you want to support what's going on, uh, then uh, to to support there'll be links. There's a link in the uh, information thing and, and stuff like that. Um, we're still no further on with the web shop and trying to set up a, a decent payment thing. That's all down to me rather than anybody else. Um, I've just got way too much on the plate at the moment, <laughs> having created uh, a massive beast. Uh, but for, for those people that do donate, um, then uh, there's a uh, there's all sorts of kind of uh, added benefits and things like that, and uh, we're looking at trying to kind of like improve that more and more. Um, but pretty much everyone that we see here is is same <laughs> regulars, uh, so it's it's very nice to to see you all. Um, so continuing on, uh, essentially the the theme of defoliation, because this is one of the, um, the 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 big things that we do at this time of year um, w across a number of species, uh, and how we do it on different species um, varies uh, quite dramatically. Uh, so last time we looked at kind of uh, Japanese maples, dried maples, and uh, kind of defoliation and leaf thinning techniques. Um, uh, and the sort of the difference between between them and kind of like how they kind of get applied to to sort of different situations. Um, uh, okay, I'm just going to close the chat off, so I'm not looking at it. Um, and uh, what was I saying about yeah, so just defoliation in general and about how uh, it kind of gets applied because it's a very misunderstood um, technique uh, and, and concept um, because it does vary from from tree to tree, species to species, uh, situation to situation. Uh, and so what applies to maples doesn't apply to zelkovas. So you can see behind me, I've got an almost entirely defoliated uh, zelkova. Um, and what applies to a zelkova won't apply to a beech. If you completely defoliate a beech, it's a bad thing to do. Okay, and so there's, there's all these kind of like different, uh, slightly different approaches to, to all these different techniques. And so it's very difficult to put it all under one, this is how you defoliate umbrella sort of thing. Uh, one of the things I was sort of talking about in the last stream um, was about these sort of concepts about um, energy levels within the tree and trying to think about them uh, kind of on a on a macro level and on, then also on a micro level. And that's something we'll kind of like focus on a little bit um, uh, with Zelkova because you can kind of really sort of force uh, areas to strengthen um, or stay the same and that's kind of like one of the the, the themes that, that that runs through quite a few of these um uh the, the examples that we're going to see in, in some videos um and what we mean by that is basically we need to sort of uh think about the energy levels within the tree and obviously uh, as with a lot of the streams uh, and a lot of the things that we talk about uh having uh watched the the stream that i did uh at the start about kind of uh, energy concepts within bonsai and, and talking about energy levels throughout the year uh and the redistribution of energy uh and, and things like that uh really sort of helps so i'm gonna sort of go back a little bit into that um and see how that applies to 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 sort of deciduous trees uh the defoliation process and then also in these sort of different sort of circumstances uh, so essentially what we're doing, what the tree does at the start of the year, has to set res uh, re reserves of energy, okay? And uh, it expends some of that energy as it sends the, the first flushes of growth out. Uh, and I've got quite a few little uh, kind of like graphs that will kind of like help us to uh, to kind of um, kind of uh, imagine this. So it all sort of starts getting looking a little bit scientific, but this is just kind of like a way of 
uh, trying to to kind of like visualize it and trying to see how it um, sort of changes in, in, in sort of different situations. Uh, it's not precise. It's not like you can't measure it. Okay, and so it's it, people complaining about like um, you know the, the inaccuracies or something like that. It's just it's ridiculous because it's just something there to to enable you to try to to kind of like visualize and see what's happening within the tree as a system. Uh, and this is how I kind of visualize it, and how I see it, uh, and it enables me to 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 make decisions based on. Um, on those kind of energy levels so thinking do i need to allow this to grow out um can i take the leaves off of, of off of these branches or do i want to leave them on to generate more energy what's going to be the response level uh, in terms of the energy will i end the end the year with more energy or less um and, and things like that so it, it, it's a good way of kind of like visualizing it and trying to aid you with the decision making process because that's essentially what the like this the, the defoliation is is just sort of going through and making uh judgment calls on what you think needs to be done uh to, to each sort of different area of the tree uh so we'll just have a look at some of those and sort of talk through them uh, i had these ready all prepared for last time um but something happened with the, the um uh, the naming of the file uh, and I basically had four of the same uh, pictures, so I kind of like one of the reasons why I was getting a bit flustered last time. Uh, but hopefully we are. We're, oh, in fact, I know we're all good this time. So uh, what we'll look at is this this graph here. Okay, uh, you should also be able to hear me. Uh, and thankfully, you can't see me anymore. Uh, so this is basically kind of like uh, on the bottom axis. There is the is the months going throughout the year, and then on the side is the, like the energy levels. And then we've got these three different colours. Uh, so essentially, like the tree, how I like to visualise it is the tree starts the year off with like 100 units of energy. These are just arbitrary units. It's not a measurement or anything like that. It's just this is where we start. It makes it easy so we can talk about percentages and such like. Uh, for the first couple of months, January, February, uh, the tree is essentially dormant. It's doing nothing. Okay. Uh, and then we start to get into the spring and it starts to spend some of that energy. Okay, so it's using all of its stored energy. It's it's putting it into foliage, um, uh, and and sort of pushing out uh, and using it. Uh, and that foliage is still very small. Uh, it's not able to sort of really sort of photosynthesize and uh, and generate any any energy back to um, uh, to to kind of uh, compensate for for, for the um, uh, for the energy that's been spent yet. Uh, so we get out into April and, and then into to, to sort of May, uh, where we are sort of now, uh, and that foliage has opened up and it's starting to to kind of like regain um, energy. So it's going it's going back into the into the sort of the positive. So you see that kind of little uptick uh, between sort of uh, April and May. Okay, and this sort of period of the year, May uh, through to the sort of early June, is where we start thinking about uh, defoliation. Okay. Uh, and we look at how it can uh, affect the energy levels of the tree. So basically, we get to this point in um, late spring, early summer, where the tree is round about back to where it uh, kind of like started off, maybe a little bit less. Okay. And then if we just let the tree grow out and develop, okay, that's the yellow line. Okay. So we do nothing to it. We just let it. We let it grow, um, and the leaves open up, photosynthesize, starts to keep going, you know, it keeps growing and growing and growing uh, and generates more and more energy. And then by the end of the year, it's essentially, you know, it's doubled the amount of energy it started with. Okay, and then it puts that into the reserves, it puts it into its buds, into its roots, into the trunk. And then the next year, the following year, it can go explosively. I mean, and what the kind of like the, you know, it, it kind of goes exponentially. So the more energy it has, the more energy it can, it can, uh, it can generate the following year. Okay, so what we need to do with bonsai and all that bonsai is is that kind of like the the, the control of that energy, how we, uh, how much we let it generate, how much we let it, uh, and where we let it go. Uh, and so one of the things to to do with defoliation is to actively weaken the tree. And so there are certain situations where, uh, particularly with the refined tree, where we'll be looking at a quite a strong sort of defoliation. Okay, and so that's that kind of like orangey red line there, where we then actively weaken the tree by making it do more work. Okay, so particularly this 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 line kind of uh, definitely applies to kind of like maples. Um, uh, we we take all of those leaves off before they've really kind of got the chance to regain all of the energy back. 
then we say, okay, do more work. So it has to spend more energy sending out the new flush, which is that drop down between June and July. And then after that, it can start to regenerate uh, energy back. And then it gets back into to ever so slightly positive by the end of the year and we're back up just above 100. And this is the kind of way that you would be looking at maintaining um, uh, a very sort of refined tree. Okay, by looking at sort of, you know, defoliation. And then the partially defoliated tree uh, being the, the, the blue line. So that's about, that's taking off a certain amount of, of, um, uh, of foliage, but not making it do, do any work. We're, we're just kind of like reducing the surface area of, um, of, of the foliage there. Okay, so we, we're kind of like uh, handicapping its ability to generate energy. And that's the way of restricting it. And so these, this is basically kind of like a good way to, to try and sort of visualize those things. Okay. Uh, if we then add start, start thinking about sort of adding fertilizer to the mix, then we can really kind of like push things through. Okay, so the, uh, the yellow line there um, is one where we are just letting the tree do, it, do, it, do its own thing. Okay, so it expends its energy out, does that, does the same thing. It ends the end, you know, it finishes the year uh, with like twice as much energy as it started. If we then start heavily fertilizing, okay, so, so putting incredible amounts of fertilizer on, then we can start doubling, tripling, quadrupling the amount of energy that gets generated because we're pushing the green growth. We're getting much more photosynthetic surface area. We're, we're pushing big leaves uh, and then we can really kind of like improve the... Um, uh, like the energy levels of the tree and this is the kind of thing that you'd be looking to do when uh, the trees are very young and early on in development this is where fertilizer really sort of comes in uh, and, and has a big effect on that okay the important thing that we need to, to, to sort of think about particularly with the refined trees um, is this kind of like the macro uh, and, and the micro level and so this is a just a kind of like a visualization of um, kind of like what happens with the like the external leaves and the and the outer leaves so that uh, yellow line there is kind of a representation of the outside of the tree so the previous graphs were, were just kind of like looking at uh, the tree as a system as a whole okay essentially like the the outer leaves because that's where the tree wants to focus all of its uh, resources and energy and its its attention to because that's where it's going to get the most um, most reward what we need to be looking at is um, uh, kind of like how we're balancing up the, uh, uh, the the kind of like the energy levels on on that kind of like on that micro level. Okay, so the, the previous graphs were kind of like the macro, which basically means the overall uh, view. Okay, then we start looking at kind of like the micro view, which is the the, the individual branches and things like that. And this is where kind of the uh, making sure that we try to um, allow sunlight inside the tree by, by using those kind of like partial defoliation techniques like uh, that we looked at um, uh, last time uh, with, the, with the maples and things like that will allow some of that. So that blue line that we that we have there uh, is, a, is kind of like the representation of the, of the inner foliage. So, you know, the, the back buds, the things that are inside the tree. Okay, so naturally they're going to be much weaker. So they're, they're going to be starting off the year at a lower level. Okay, so in January and February, they they are already down at like seventy units compared to the external ones. So you know you can see that in the bud size on on those inner leaves, on those inner branches and things like that. They're just much smaller because the previous year they weren't getting as much energy. There, were, there wasn't as much energy being generated by those leaves, and therefore the stored energy in them is less. And also the tree doesn't want to be wasting its energy on internal growth. It's not efficient for the tree. Okay. Aesthetically, that's what we want, but the tree doesn't much care about it. Uh, and so they're naturally sort of start setting off from a a, a weaker position. Uh, they open themselves out, so they're you know they're expending the energy. The tree, they're, then they're sort of dropping down. And once you start dropping down to, to those weaker below the say the fifty mark, that's when things start to, to 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 potentially go wrong. That's where it's difficult for for those areas, you know, those, those inner branches to say come back from uh, losing foliage and things like that. And so we always want to make sure that the, those inner branches are as strong as possible. And so the way that we do that with the maples and the way that we do it with other species uh, is, to, is to, to defoliate the outer areas, to, to weaken those, okay, um, by uh, thinning the, the surface area down, 
or by removing one of a pair with the maples and things like that or by act or by you know removing them in the case particularly in the case of zelkovas and things like that and by do by doing that we allow the sunlight in therefore that inner foliage can follow along that blue line uh, photosynthesize more generate more energy if we don't do anything basically it just kind of flat lines as you sort of see in the red line there okay and so once you get once you get into a sort of situation like that the you know those those inner branches branches and buds basically just kind of get aborted they die off and um, because there's just not enough energy within them to, to, to keep going okay uh, okay and then we're back to the, the the star so a weird kind of like graphical representation of what's going on but that's essentially kind of like how i visualize it some people said that the previous graphs that they were looking at were kind of like a, 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 a quite beneficial to, to to kind of visualizing um kind of what was going on there um and so i hope that was wasn't too boring too much like uh, gcse science lessons and math lessons and things like that but that's essentially kind of like what's what's kind of like uh, happening and so you if you think like that and you try and imagine what the the energy levels are like within those different areas of the tree uh, both like as the tree overall and then within each individual branches that can kind of like help you to to make the judgments as we sort of said earlier it's very kind of like uh important for um for, for maples particularly um but also you know sort of beech uh and hornbeams as well with zelkovas and chinese elms they 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 kind of like fall in between those which is why we're doing them like kind of like in the middle and um, because Whilst, uh, uh, in a sense, they do still kind of um, uh, fit in with that, that, you know, that kind of idea and that theory. They're actually a tree that uh, respond very, very well to, to sort of defoliation techniques if they are healthy and happy. Uh, and it's actually a really good way of kind of like making them work. Um, so with uh, sort of really healthy trees uh, and very refined trees, so let's just, you know, take a trident maple for example uh in japan it's possible um for people to defoliate like completely defoliate a trident maple twice maybe even three times if they if they're really on top of it um and so you get three flushes of growth every year so you can build up th like three times the amount of uh ramification uh, but what happens is that those branches the branch tips end up doing so much work they're they're, they're, they're pushing so much energy and they're, they're working so hard that they swell up they can become really really coarse and aesthetically trees that get like tried maples that get worked on in that way always end up with these really coarse ugly branches and you can see that there are some certain leaf varieties which are much worse than others uh, but for example a lot of the the the, the more kind of well-established um kind of like old school traditional nurseries won't be uh, won't be kind of um pursuing that kind of uh, aggressive uh, sort of techniques where the, the, the key words, the, like the, the aesthetic is one of kind of like elegance and delicacy. And that's one of the things that I particularly look for within my deciduous trees. So everything that I do, I do it for you and uh, the um, delicacy of the, of the branch tips and things like that. And so there are aesthetic ideas that are at play here as well, not just kind of like horticultural and, and energy things. Like, what are we trying to achieve? And I don't want my trees, personally, to become too coarse. This is the goal for me with the, with the Zelkova, with this beautiful kind of, like, uh, soft and delicate um, branching. Okay, so a lot of the trees that I've got um, with the Zelkovas have, have been heavily pruned back. I did one on, uh, I think, on Instagram a while back. I should have had the pictures for it. Uh, but, yeah, just taking out, like, massive heavy um, sections out of, the, out of the tree to try and bring in that sort of delicacy. Um, oh God, that would have been the perfect example. I'll put it on uh, Discord later or, 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 or something for, for those people that would be interested. Um, but yeah, trying to bring that sort of de delicacy into, into the branch tips. And so for the most part, we don't kind of like do t too aggressive a, uh, a defoliation um, regime for that. I want to try and get the node lengths appropriate for the size. And so if you kind of like aggressively defoliate too much, sure the tree will be okay and it might, might just keep bouncing back but the, the the you know the tips become coarse you get too many buds coming from from certain areas and things like that and so it's it, the, the aesthetic considerations at play for for defoliation as well as um as well as those energy levels 
Okay, but Zelkovas and Elms and things like that are ones where if you defoliate them, they will come back and they will keep, you know, they'll keep working and working and working. Um, as long as they're healthy, as long as they've got a good root system, and as long as you allow them to grow out in the spring enough so that they get back to that point where they're they've, they've in that first flush of growth, they've regained as pretty much about as much energy as they've as they've spent. They, with uh, the Zelkovas, they tend to uh, the leaves t tend to harden off a lot quicker than some of the other species. Um, and so, you know, once they've become hard, essentially they're at that point where they've they've regained the energy that's been spent on them, and you could see them starting to to, to push buds. On um, one of the examples, uh, the thing, the the second one that comes up, it's actually it's, it's already beginning to push its own second flush of uh, of growth already, um, because it's that it just wants to do that, and so actively defoliating them taking them back to, to, to very little and pushing them again will is actually very beneficial to, to, to thickening branches up. And so, whereas with maples and things like that, there is a certain amount of that, but the, the, the energy levels are, are perhaps a little bit more um, sort of difficult to balance. Um, with the Zelkovas and, and, and Elms and things like that, you just keep hitting them back, they keep coming, keep hitting them back, they keep coming. There's a limit to how much you can do it, like maybe twice in a year absolutely kind of like the, the max uh or you know maybe every kind of like third year you give it you know or when you're kind of like repotting it maybe you're giving it a rest but they're quite uh you know if, if, if they're pushing hard you can push them back hard and you can have this kind of like quite um aggressive battle where the tree de develops really really quite quickly um so all of the things that we're talking about, as I said, there's different applications to, to, to different trees. And Zelkova are one where we would, Zelkova and, and Chinese arms, one where we can actually be looking at quite a, aggressive defoliation. This was done earlier today, uh, or not, depending on the situation. Okay, so we're going to look at some of those uh, examples, look at some of the trees that we looked at in, in the one of the first streams that we did, um, uh, and kind of like go through some of those. So the first one is that little shohin uh, that we saw. Uh, and this is one basically where very little gets done to it because uh, it got pruned back quite aggressively um, in the spring. Uh, and so um, a lot of the, the buds, a lot of the growth that's come out has come from, from the inside. Okay, and so those inner buds are buds that are slightly weaker. Okay, so the, you know, those were the, the, the branches that had less energy to begin with at the start of the year. So by taking, by going in and cutting off uh, early in the year, I should have the tree here. Uh, you know, we were getting rid of a lot of those um, kind of real strong buds uh, and, and, and relying on the weaker ones. And so because that was done, we just basically kind of do very little at, uh, at the moment. Just look at some balancing up. Um, so here's just a very short video about that. So this is the little show hin that we looked at earlier by pruning the branches by doing that sort of technique. Uh, so what we want to do is just go through uh, and make sure that none of the shoots are extending out too far unless we want them to. So we have got one which is going in from the inside. We want that to extend out and become a, a branch. Okay, because we have a big gap in here. A lot of this, this upper growth, we can cut that back to, to say two leaves. And the leaves are a little bit on the soft side, but we can come in and, and, and take some of those off, get that second flush of growth. And then just look to try and keep it that sort of same, those branches the same length and strength. We're removing the leaves on the outside to get a second flush of growth. And allow sunlight on the inside. Anything that's really weak like this, just leave alone. So we're only really looking at those stronger shoots, those big leaves, in order to get a little bit more balance in the tree. Okay, so that's just three or four minutes work, and that's as much as we need to take off. So any of these lower branches with all the foliage that's still been left on there allowed to grow out, that's just there to sort of thicken up. Similarly with this uh, shoot there, um, but the other areas we just looked at, just knocking it back a touch, making sure it's all balanced up and some of those larger leaves have been taken off to stimulate second flushes of growth and well balanced. So this is going to be fed 
put out on the bench. We'll have another look at it in maybe a month's time. Okay, uh, so there clearly wasn't that much to do. That was almost a real-time uh, video. Uh, but the reason why there was so little to do was because, as I said, we, we cut it back quite hard uh, and there wasn't a massive kind of explosion of growth um, to sort of deal with anything. Um, and so basically the, the decision-making process there was based upon uh, the response of the tree to the work that was done to it previously uh, and then just looking at how we can just... Uh, on, a, on that kind of like very micro level, just balance up some of the energy uh, production capabilities of some of those areas. Uh, and so just taking off some of the, the, the larger leaves, let the light in, restricting some areas, assisting others. Uh, so a lot of those, uh, those little Shohin um, uh, Zelkovas, uh, they're, they're produced in a, in a kind of like a real um, production level type of way. Uh, because Zelkova, Chinese elms and stuff like that, they, they really respond to, to, to that kind of um, not brutal kind of approach to it, but you can literally kind of just pick them up, cut them, put the another one down and all this and come in and take leaves off quite aggressively and, the, and they'll respond to it. And so they, they really do work, uh, respond well to, to that kind of production like techniques. And there's a gentleman who uh, grows them very, 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 very well. Um, I'll just loads of this sort of showing material uh, just outside of Tokyo, um, and he, his basically his his rule of thumb is every single tree in his nursery go, comes to his workbench seven times a year. So he's working on on those trees at least seven times a year, every single one, and he's just got tens of thousands of them. I uh, just brings them in tray by tray, picks them up like this. Um, uh, but he chooses species that, that, that kind of like work, uh, that respond really well to that uh, aggressive uh, sort of grow out, cut back, grow out, cut back sort of techniques. Um, so we'll look at that tree again, maybe in three or four weeks, a month, see if there's anything else that needs to do it. And just look at it a couple of times throughout the year and see if we can't just, you know, looking at uh, balancing up those, those, those levels there. So that's one where we do very little. Um, then we start to, the, the, what we're going to be looking at is kind of like um, how we can use defoliation to, to make certain areas work uh, and at the same time hold some, some areas back. It's a bit of a contradictory kind of uh, statement, so the sort of defoliating will make, thing, make things work again, which will help to thicken up, but also defoliation will reduce the, the, the energy capabilities of certain areas to uh, to hold them back, okay, and very much like a lot of things in bonsai, there are a lot of sort of contradictory ideas going going ahead, and so with some of the things that we're going to look at, sort of talk about, there's some, some sort of contradictory sort of statements going on, um, but the key thing is what happens to that second flush of growth, okay, so we'll be looking at some some sort of defoliation to 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 uh, make make it work again and push out again. And some areas, those areas that you're going to be wanting to thicken, they'll just be left to grow out uh, again. Uh, the areas that we're looking to try and hold back, if they get defoliated to let some sunlight in or to reduce their kind of um, energy production capabilities, those areas will then be getting sort of pinched back. So if there's any, if ever kind of like, well, we sort of try to say two, two different things there, uh, that's kind of like what's, what's important. So there is secondary tertiary work that gets done uh, to, to kind of continue that uh, um, those those energy balancing uh, things throughout the year, um, which I probably didn't explain in the videos, which is why I'm sort of saying now. So this is going to be a look at something which is a little bit more uh, kind of like um, really rampant growth. So that heavy fertilizing um, approach where we're we're trying to get the energy level from 100 up to 300 or even four um, within the tree, um, and we're we're going through really big uh, Kind of um, changes within within the within the year, uh, within short periods of time, and then also in different areas of the tree. Okay, so here's just a look at that. I'll try and answer some questions as well, but not about Brian Adams. Uh, so this is a tree which is really uh, in early stages of redevelopment, rebuilding, and it's going absolutely gangbusters. So what we need to do is just look at balancing up some of that growth asking strong areas to, to, to work again. Uh, just checking on some wire. Uh, there's a couple of pieces of wire up at the top here. 
There's some wire up in the top here which has been wrapped in uh, plastic tubing to stop it from damaging the bark. So I just need to check that it's not digging in. You see this tree is so vigorous it's already sent out a second flush of growth. So this big leaf is the first flush and then it's subsequently from its own from the base of its own leaf without having the leaf removed has then sent out a second flush. So what we're going to do is we're going to stimulate that type of growth over the whole outer part of the tree, do an aggressive sort of defoliation where we can see big swollen buds. So this is a tree that we're still very much focusing on that primary branching structure and the thickness of those branches. Uh, and the defoliation techniques we're applying here is just a way of kind of looking at increasing thickness by making very strong branches work. Okay, so we've got this one down here, which is very uh, youthful uh, and strong. You see how uh, the colour of it, I mean, this is just, a, uh, most of that was all sort of grown last year um, without any sort of defoliation applied to it. Uh, it's just one long extension. Uh, and now what we can do, because that's so strong, is this branch been defoliated, that'll work again. It'll push out second flushes of growth that will then extend out further and thicken that area. So that's one concept that we're applying. But then also where we have uh, other branches which are slightly weaker, um, so this one here, for example, this is a branch that we want in our primary branching structure. But because it's so weak, we can't ask this to, 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 to grow again um, this year to exercise even further. It will be left completely undefoliated um, and just left to grow uh, and strengthen up a little bit more. Then when we come in and cut back, that sort of uh, explosive growth that we'll experience there will start to behave a little bit more vigorously and we can look at sort of defoliating it next year to make it work even harder. But if we ask an old branch to work hard now, it's just gonna keel over and die. So the some of the branches up in the top uh, area here we're sort of cut back a little bit to shape so that, that second flush of growth isn't going to be too vigorous so that's just one way of um, sort of balancing up um, some of the, th the more vigorous areas uh, and some of the weaker areas and what we're going to do is make sure that we get a lot more sunlight in these lower areas so it's going to go in a different place in the garden as you can see good amounts of fertilizer and we're going to continue pushing this tree throughout the year uh, so you can sort of see there that obviously we're really sort of pushing it um, primarily to, to, to get the, uh, particularly those lower um, primary branches um, and secondary branches to thicken up. And so we're still in a very kind of, uh, let's try and work it as much as we possibly can uh, type situation, uh, but equally not looking to, to work certain areas uh, excessively. Okay, so that's why some of the uh, those weaker branches that were in really good places were left with, with foliage on there because really the judgment call there is that if I defoliate these, then the tree is not going to send any energy to push uh, in, these, in the, the, these sort of sections because essentially the, um, like the, the live vein that's feeding that, the, the vascular system uh, of those branches is... is not necessarily compromised, but it's not as strong as, as, as others because it's not been working. Uh, and so it's an old man. We don't want to make him work twice as, twice in the year. Those younger branches, we can make them work and work and work um, and thicken quite rapidly, same as your, your, your muscles will do. Um, <clears throat> and so that sort of, those defoliation techniques were applied differently across, ac across the way. Okay. Uh, so I hope that kind of is a little bit of, uh, makes a little bit of sense. It, it does in my head. Um, <clears throat> there's another uh, kind of example of, uh, of that. Uh, and this, is, this involves a tree that uh, particularly had uh, a lot of uh, frost, um, wind, <laughs> heat scorched uh, damage. Um, uh, and this is something that uh, a lot of people may have had this year uh, with maples, um, beech, everything basically deciduous. Uh, and so how we sort of deal with those trees, trees uh, the best example of that will be the um, the Mia Sama tr uh, tribe maple that we looked at in the, in the previous um, 
stream. Uh, but with Zelkovas, because they are so vigorous, um, you can still... It's just a, like a small blip in the road when you when you sort of lose foliage in that way um, because they're so vigorous and they're and able to kind of like cope with that um, that they'll just, just, just keep going anyway. So you don't really need to sort of build that into your um, decision-making process as much as you would do, say, with um, more delicate Japanese maples and things like that. Uh, so here's an example of one that got uh, pretty badly annihilated. Okay, so this is a, a tree that we looked at earlier in the year um, and one that we were looking at letting grow out for various different reasons, mainly to thicken up branches. Uh, now if we have a look at the foliage, you'll notice that it's got a very lovely dark colour and is hard to touch. The softer new foliage is this light green, very soft growth, and obviously the smaller leaves, it's just coming out, it's still extending there. Uh, but one thing that you'll notice is that there's a lot of frost damage on this tree. We had a very light frost when a lot of the leaves were uh, just um, very sort of soft and tender. There's also, it could potentially be wind damage. Um, and so this tree's had a, a little bit of a battering, uh, but it's still come back very strong. There's new growth pushing from tips all over. And we're getting second clusters of growth coming from the, from the end. So what we're going to do is going to remove a lot of these older leaves, let a little bit more sunlight into these inner sections, which are still growing, still pushing through, uh, and make the tree work again. Make it exercise a little bit more. We're not going to hit it back too hard because we're still wanting it to generate a lot of energy, but we just need to give it another kick. So these damaged leaves are the ones we're really focusing on taking off, and the, the larger ones. Now you can pull them off like this, but the best way to do it really uh, is with a pair of scissors, just going through, cutting right at the base of the leaf, uh, avoiding these new buds which are beginning to swell. See that in there? So these have already started to swell because the tree is so full of energy and wishing to grow again. And so by removing these leaves, all we're doing is just sort of stimulating that second flush of growth, making the tree work again. So Alcova are a very, very vigorous species. They want to, to grow multiple times through the year. And so we need to manage their, that sort of growth habit, that desire of the tree to grow all the time, make it grow in the, in the areas that we want it to. Because we are, all we are doing is focusing on thickening. I'm not really concerned about the style, the length of the branches. The maximum amount of foliage is our goal for this tree at this stage. Letting some light in to this inner growth is another thing that we just want to think about doing. We've got buds on the inside which we want to just allow those to, to strengthen up. But really, we're going to focus on the, um, the inner growth when, it, when we come to sort of cut back and start, re start styling and working on the ramification. But if we can get some of those inner buds to, to grow out and strengthen at uh, this time, then that, that's helping us move forward quicker. So for this one, we've achieved our goal by removing all of the damaged leaves uh, in those sort of exposed areas uh, and making those stronger areas exercise and work again so the inner stuff there hasn't really generated enough energy to start sending out those big buds again it doesn't really want to if we try and force that to work again we could end up with uh, by weakening the tree but those stronger areas up on the top we can ask them to exercise again to work again send out a second flush of growth uh, which will then help to thicken the the, the stems the branches uh, even further then once we've achieved our desired thickness, then we can look at coming back in and taking it into a more refined stage of development. Okay, so uh, the one sort of uh, caveat or point to, 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 to remember about that tree is it was talked about in the um, uh, 
initial stream that we did about um, Zelkovas and such like. And uh, that one had a, a very, very severe repot two years ago. Um, and so um, it's still kind of like, in, 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 I'm still a little bit scared to really sort of push it too hard. Uh, lost a little bit of the inner foliage and things like that. Um, and so still looking very much at kind of like bouncing up those, those, those things there. Um, so that's a, you know, just a, a little bit more of a, of a kind of like a, a nudge in, in, in that direction. Um, but, but still kind of like, uh, just not going too, too, too aggressive, not going all the way down, down to that. Uh, I mean, you perhaps could do, uh, could go, uh, as far as, as far back as that and it, and it would respond. Uh, but then potentially the, the kind of like the root development may, uh, may not, not, not be as, as much or the, the potential for, um, disaster, um, uh, could be a little bit more kind of like uh, high, so just sort of erring on the side of caution with with, with that tree. Uh, I'll just mention one of the points uh, in the chat um, because it is kind of um, it is, is relatively important. Uh, so uh, Persevan was asking about um, uh, to thicken a trunk. The logic is to let it grow uh, unchecked in the ground, uh, but what you show makes me wonder if defoliation will help to thicken because it multiplies branches. So what to think do? Uh, so growing things in the ground is a very kind of um, it, it, it's just, it's something which you don't just 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 put it in there and, and just, uh, put things in the ground and just leave them to to do whatever they want. Uh, they have to be looked at. The trees have to be looked at um, on a, a you know a, a very kind of um, frequent basis. Uh, the same as you know the trees growing in, in, in pots do. Uh, and so if you're looking at building up the branches uh, alongside um, your uh your trunk thickening which is perfectly possible okay you can you can do uh two three things at the same time then you are going to want to come in and, and and look at pruning because if you just let things grow it's just going to go all the way up okay? if you're just going to let things let it go all the way up and then come in uh, and sort of just just trunk chop it back and then sort of like grow a broom then essentially what it'll, what it'll be doing is it'll be just it'll, it'll grow out and it'll just keep pushing uh new new foliage all the time but you're just it's just going to be kind of like uncontrolled growth okay so by coming in and, and pruning at the correct times okay so the, when we're talking about pruning after that first push of growth has come out and hardened off not going in and pinch pinching really really quickly if you go in and pinch and prune really early on in the season then things aren't going to extend out they're not going to start to develop that uh sort of second uh that you know the the, the thickness that you want because there's not going to be that same sort of foliage mass but it comes to a point like in 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 now where basically the tree just like okay i'm I'm just going to stop growing because i don't want to just keep spending energy and keep going and keep going and keep going i want to kind of hold some in reserve uh and that's kind of like where the, the zelkovas and elms are you know they kind of like get to they just get to this point and they just start getting a bit complacent and so at that time you get in there and you just give it a kick up the arse and you make it work again and by doing that by cutting back some of the branches, by taking some of the leaves off, it's like, oh God, I've got, to go. I've got to work again, and it starts working, it starts growing again. You get second flushes of growth. Think, keep, things just keep going, uh, and you get that extra um, energy generation from from the from all of that foliage, uh, and it, it it helps to thicken up. Okay, so it's kind of like it is. It, it does sound a little bit counterintuitive, and if you apply this, as I say, kind of apply these these ideas to to other species, then uh, it's it's not quite as um, uh, as effective, but really this is very much kind of like the 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 the, the hedge very similar to the the, the hedge pruning technique that, that say Walter Paul promotes, in that you're just pushing growth all the time, all the time, all the time, growing you know just pushing lots and lots of growth, getting in there and cutting it back, getting in there and cutting it back, and just keep just just that cycle just constantly throughout the year, and by doing that you get lots and lots of branches coming, lots and lots of foliage, and lots of lots of thickening okay the the difficulty with the that kind of that the that, that hedge pruning technique is what you, you're never going to get this type of of, uh, of of refinement and stuff like that so field growing and things like that yes it's a very good idea but not for other things so i hope that kind of like you know, sort of clarifies that um uh so let's sort of then uh sort of shift tack to to, to look at this tree then 
uh, and, to, and to look at some of like the, the how you sort of deal with uh, a refined uh, image and, and how you go. And this is this is about as, uh, the, the most refined looking tree that we've got here. Um, as I say, I try to uh, a lot of the, the elms um, and silkovers that I buy are all things that need a lot of uh, attention, uh, a lot of kind of like rebuilding of the, the primary structures. That That's why a lot of these examples are kind of like that. Um, but this is one uh, which is slightly different. Uh, and we'll just have a look at the kind of like the approach with this one. Okay. And here it is. So this is a tree which has been in uh, development for a lot longer. Uh, the top of the tree is well refined. These lower branches, uh, which I'd already started defoliating, um, and the video hadn't t t been turned on, uh, have been uh, going out to, to sort of thicken up a little bit. Uh, everything on the tree is very strong, uh, top to bottom. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit on the weaker side is some of the inner bits. So this is going to be a much, much more aggressive defoliation. We don't have to worry about uh, the, the roots. There's plenty of energy within the tree. And so we're going to go through and really take off uh, the majority of the leaves on this one uh, and really stimulate that second flush of growth everywhere on the tree. Okay. So this is the, a little bit more of a refinement stage up at the top of the tree. So we're not going in and just sort of pruning back uh, aggressively. Um, this was pinched early in the season as, as things were coming out. It wasn't allowed to extend off. So all of the tips up in, up in here, all of the twigs are very delicate. And there's no coarse growth. So that pinching of the tips in the spring really does help with uh, keeping the, 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 the growth up in the top nice and delicate, not allowing it to extend out too far and become too coarse before cutting back. Obviously these lower branches, we're trying to achieve something different there. So here's the tree, pretty much entirely defoliated, apart from some of the weaker leaves on the inside. Um, what you'll notice about the top of the tree is that it's really quite delicate and there's no coarse growth uh, anywhere. This is because over the last couple of years it's been uh, pinched quite early on. Nothing's been allowed to sort of grow out and, and extend uh, and become aggressively long. We've also been quite sparse with the fertilizer during the, during the spring. Uh, there is some applied uh, because we want some thickness growing out in the lower branches, but too much application will result in coarse growth up in the top. There are a few areas that need to be looked at. Uh, so for example, this branch here. This is one that was previously been growing out to, um, to thicken up. Uh, it got cut back. We've then seen um, secondary branch growth from there. And so what we'll do is we'll just come in and cut back here. So that branch there now has lost that sort of coarse feel to it uh, and we've introduced a little bit of taper and, and some natural changes of direction. This is now in keeping with the rest of the branches around it. We'll just have a quick look around for any branches that, lo that are like that. Okay, so this one here is just getting a little bit on the on the coarse and aggressive side up at the top there. So we'll just come in and cut back to this side shoot there. Apart from that, the only issues we have with the branches are these lower sections here, uh, which we will look at later on in the year after that second flush of growth, when we can look back, look at uh, sort of leaf drop time, to doing some of those major prunes uh, and, and cutting back to shape a little bit more. Uh, but for now, what we've done is defoliated the top of the tree to cause a second flush of growth, to get more ramification, to thin out any of the strong areas and on the bottom what we've done is defoliated to cause a second flush of growth to help thickening so on that second flush of growth we'll treat it the same as the first up in here we'll pinch that quite quickly not allow it to extend off two foot too much on the bottom sections we'll just let that grow and grow and grow So, basically using the same technique there, uh, almost uh, sort of complete defoliation, but to, to two different ends. So again, that sounds counterintuitive, but what is important is the what happens afterwards. Okay, and so the techniques go hand in hand with then 
the pinching of the second flush of growth. So if I don't pinch the tops of this tree, as, it, as that second push of growth opens out, if I don't come in and stop that from getting any further than say two or three leaves, then all we're gonna end up with is coarseness in the top because it's working again, it's thickening again, and we're gonna lose the delicacy and the, the ramification that we want in to, to try and achieve. With these lower branches, if I come in and pinch, then I'm not gonna get the extensions that I want. I'm not gonna get the photosynthetic surface, the extra photosynthetic surface area that I want. I'm not gonna get that thickening that I want. And so this technique isn't just a one-off, it's a part of a, a you know a continuous um, chain of work um, that's got all of these other different things uh, going on. So these areas were pinched in the spring to stop them from extending out too much. These areas were not. Everything gets defoliated, second flush of growth, this gets pinched, this doesn't. And so it's just a repetition of the same thing that we were doing earlier. The reason why this tree can obviously, we can we can do that much more aggressive uh, defoliation um, technique is that uh, over the last few years, uh, the energy levels have been very, very high, both top to bottom, inside and out. As I said, there's no issues with the roots. Uh, this was a quite a severe repot three years ago, maybe two, three years ago, uh, but it bounced back from that absolutely no problem. Um, and, and just the, you know, the, the the tree's response to all of the work that's been, ever, that's been done has always been good. Uh, we've got inner branches in there that aren't that haven't been dying off and, and such like, and so it can withstand that. Okay, maybe next year if it doesn't get repotted then maybe it won't. And so it's getting to the point where next year I'll have to sort of repot it. And then maybe the, the, the techniques will, <clears throat> or the, the, the level of aggression of the techniques will be will be changed. Uh, but this is one of the only ways um, to, to really build up that very dense branching, dense fine branching on a Zelco in a very short period of time. Okay. One of the things that I hope uh, sort of comes across with uh, what we're talking about here and, and like a lot of the things that I've spoken about in the streams and things like that is this idea that you're not treating every single part of the tree the same and applying that same technique as a, as a big broad brushstroke across the whole tree, just cutting it back regardless. Right? That micro and macro manipulation of the branches, thinking about things as the whole and then on, on all the, 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 the different individual branches, what do I do here? What am I trying to achieve with this branch? And that was one of the things that I just got drilled into me uh, as an apprentice because we had one um, um, old guy who used to come in and help and like whenever he was uh, pruning azaleas in particular, just switch off and he'd just be talking all the time and he'd just have these shears and he'd just... And every, it was exactly the same thing every time. He didn't think about, okay, I need to grow this branch out here. I need to leave a little bit more foliage on here. This bit's too dense. I want to cut this one back harder. It was just cut it all back the same and it the what after he left the chief just used to complain for hours about him it's just how oh my god he just just keeps doing every it's just the same tree it never improves the tree's never improving it's just the same thing all the time uh and so it just had that just just sort of drilled into me and so it really kind of like made me think about okay well how do you develop trees that want to grow upwards how do we get them to, to the, those lower branches to, to thicken out how do we get energy up inside the tree how do we get it to, to go where we want it to and it is about that taking things uh, on a very sort of specific way um, so thank you for showing me the way that old guy who I still love to this day uh, but anyway we're, we're going off track um, so we yes so that's kind of like um, how we can look at sort of defoliation to, to, to achieve all these different um, sort of ideas and techniques uh, in different situations. And as I said, a lot of these ideas and concepts will be applicable to, uh, to, to maples uh, and applicable to uh, beech and hornbeams and things like that with differences in, in how aggressively they're applied or the uh, leaf cutting versus sort of uh, sort of total um, defoliation and things like that. So when we get on to looking at beech and, and hornbeam, which will be coming up soon because uh, the hornbeams, most of the leaves are pretty hard on them, uh, but the beech were still uh, a little bit soft with some of those. Um, so we'll think about that. And we've also got a lot of azalea stuff to cover soon. Uh, but that will just be the next kind of, um, sort of 
puzzle piece uh, to sort of uh, put together, I hope. Um, the other thing that we can sort of just uh, look at at this time of year is also um, making some sort of big stone uh, choices because we have, particularly like with uh, with the elms and ch uh, Chinese elms and, and, and things like that, you've had this big first flush of growth. There's, there's, there's energy within the tree uh, and now we can kind of like look at cutting it back and pushing into into different areas and different directions. Um, Chinese elms are a much maligned tree, uh, but I love them. They're great. They're great to play with. Um, this tree uh, I've had to kick it around for a number of years, uh, four or five years or something like that. Uh, it started off as a pencil thick little um, little thing, and it, it takes about I don't know two hours a year just to work on it. Uh, and slowly, slowly, it, it keeps coming through. Um, there is a I did make a video on that, but I'm not going to see that oh, now because I didn't manage to get it all video, uh, edited. Um, but they're a great species, and a great species to work on for, for particularly for beginners and things like that. Uh, and even though the kind of like the, the S bend type trees, you can kind of like make something half decent out of. Um, this is one that was featured. Oh dear! Uh, in my book. Available from all good uh, retailers, etc., etc. I don't make any commission off it, so don't worry. Uh, but this was a, a £15 um, S bend uh, Chinese elm uh, in 2012 13. Uh, and so now it's somewhere half decent. Uh, and the application of the techniques that we've talked about uh, uh, basically got us to, to, to this point. Uh, you can see here we're still working on trying to thicken up some of the branches and so these lower ones here uh, they're all being they've just been sort of past they've been defoliated making them work again the rest of the tree we're kind of like just just treading water there just keeping it going uh, not really making it work too too much because we're getting the, the kind of the light and delicate image that i'm looking for okay uh, so we'll look at just quickly at uh sort of some styling decisions that you can make uh, at this sort of time of year uh, because it gives you a chance to to go in um, with these sort of very vigorous trees, um, and um, sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, problems on your end, mate. Um, sorry, uh, it, it, it's a good time to go in there and do some sort of uh, big branch pruning and things like that. So, just have a quick look at this, uh, and then I'll answer any other questions, and then go in for my D. So this is a Chinese elm, uh, one of those sort of uh, S-bend Chinese elms that you get from B&Q off the internet and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was put into the ground for a couple of years. Uh, had some pruning done to it, obviously. So you can see that S-bend there uh, sort of moving up. But it's a big, thick tree now. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to come in and cut back this leader here, take the line of the trunk up into there. Good time of year to do it because we, now we'll get a good second flush of growth. And then we'll look at pruning some of the branches back to force that second flush. Okay, so to develop that taper, change, natural change of direction. I'm going to come in. Look at that. Now, we'll try and make this cut as flush as we can. There will be a lot of um, buds form in and around this area. So what we'll just do is come in take a clip and grow type approach where we're looking to introduce natural changes of direction there by pruning back to sort of secondary branches where that doesn't exist in, in such an obvious way there we can just come in and cut back to shape. Chinese elms are very vigorous. Just look to try and create our idealized branching structure. Any of these branches here, for example, that we're looking at thickening up. Okay, which one are we going to keep? We'll keep this one here. We'll get rid of that one that's coming out of the back. Don't want two from that same spot. Okay, like this. Then what we'll do. We'll take the leaves off, okay, 
try and force it to, to grow again. Now that that uh, top's been cut off, the tree's going to grow, particularly if we feed it and water it, which this tree hasn't had a whole lot of. These just get forgotten about at the back of the garden. Okay, that one can come off too. We don't want that. Or do we? No. Coming from that kind of inside of the curve type uh, position, that can come out. So I'll just take all the rest of these leaves off, force that second bit of growth. So with the branching structure, the secondary branching structure, what we're looking for is an appropriate node length. So to cut the branches back to uh, an appropriate node length for the size of the tree. So if this was a much shorter tree, we'd be making sure that our node lengths, the distance between the branches, or those changes of direction would be very tight and compact. For a slightly taller tree, we can uh, leave those to, to, to grow a little bit, you know, to have slightly more uh, separation between the branches. Chinese elms, they will bud very, very proficiently. They'll bud everywhere when you prune them back. So that's why they're ideal for beginners. And so just go in there and be aggressive with them if they're healthy. You know, don't be afraid to cut. Don't be afraid to try things out. They'll, they'll grow back. You can't really make terrible mistakes with them. Okay. If you apply this type of technique to a maple or hornbeam or beech, then you're going to end up with a dead tree. But there are some similarities with the techniques that we use. And what working with these will do is teach you the importance of health and vigour, but also building up that beautiful, well-balanced branching structure because the node length on elms is naturally quite short. Send out second bushes of growth. You can develop the branches tight and compact really, really quite quickly. Once we move into a bit more of a refinement stage, what we can then do is look at real directional pruning. For the moment, we're just sort of focusing on getting a basic shape, some thickness into branches. This now is the makings of an interesting um, kind of natural image. Uh, and if we just work on majority of sort of clip and grow, might need to look at maybe just putting a little bit of wire on some of the branches just to open things up. But realistically, just trying to get all of that natural branch movement through, through pruning as opposed to putting curves and things in, in the branch. And then we can really utilize this kind of natural change of direction and such like. Uh, and basically, this has been five minutes of work um, and do that a couple of times a year. In five to 10 years time, this will be a much, much more interesting a tree that has some great future for bonsai. Obviously, this uh, the S curve down at the bottom is is, is terrible, um, but over time that's going to thicken out on the inside of this curve here a little bit and start to improve. Uh, apologies for the abrupt end. Uh, there was another bit, uh, bit of the video, uh, but. It was recorded without any sound. Uh, so apologies for the uh, the appalling uh, camera work uh, and stuff there. Um, but it gives you an idea of kind of like what you can also do this time of year um, with that type of material. And that was kind of like semi-field grown for a couple of years just in order to, to kind of get that thickness going there. Uh, but you see that none of those branches were like massively thick uh, apart from that big leader. Um, uh, and that was because, you know, things have been sort of uh, pruned back a little bit. Uh, previous years in order to, um, uh, to to kind of build up some, some kind of like uh, a little bit more ramification in those lower branches. Uh, if we hadn't have done that, the, then some of those lower branches wouldn't be anywhere near as um, thick and interesting as as, as they as they were. Um, but it's um, as I sort of said, it's a it's a species that um, shouldn't be uh, dismissed because of the, of the, of, of the price uh, and their ease of av availability. They will make really good, interesting trees. Um, there's no kind of like saying that they're going to be, uh, you know, sort of uh, winning the trophy anytime soon um, or, you know, sort of competing on an international level. But 
uh, they're, they're fun to play with and you will get some good results in a relatively short period of time and as I said in, in the videos it will sort of sh uh, teach you some uh, kind of interesting concepts about energy and, and, and things like that but the one thing is that you do have to, 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 to understand those concepts and then be able to uh, attune those to, to the, the different species and things like that um, one thing I will just say there's there was parts of the video um, uh, and, and things like that where you might see me being kind of like uh, seemingly quite aggressive with the, the, the defoliation and taking things off. Uh, everything is done with real sort of soft hands and, and really quite um, a delicate touch and things like that. So don't go in there and just kind of like tearing, all, all, tearing away and things like that. It's, it's a, you know, there was one of the videos that showed the, like that little sort of twist and the, and the, the pinch and things like that. It takes, you know, don't yank things out and, uh, 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 and go kind of like against the grain with the with the with the leaves and things like that. Uh, that's pretty much what I would say. Um, the um, not many questions come in, so I uh, <laughs> uh, um, not many questions have come in, so. Uh, I'll answer these that have just come in now, uh, and then we'll, we'll call it a night. Um, so, uh, Jordi John, uh, why do you think the S bend was terrible? Uh, just the artificial nature of that curve um, was just a bit excessive, um, and just the lack of um, just the uniform the the uniformity of that of that of that curve. Uh, you, it was just so perfect um, that it wouldn't really. And it didn't. It wasn't in keeping with the rest of the tree. I should have it here, but I don't. Uh, yeah, it's just not in keeping with the rest of the tree. So that's why it wasn't so 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 great. Um, uh, right, uh, Bob Carlyle, Bob McCarlyle. Sorry. Uh, what's the minimum dormancy period for Chinese elms? I don't know. Um, could I leave it in the garage until late December or early January and then take it out? Uh, I th isn't it really cold where you are? Um, I don't know about that, Bob. I'll, I'll, uh, I leave mine out. I keep mine in. Sometimes they drop their leaves. Sometimes they don't. Uh, they're, they're a weird tree, but they, they do try and get them uh, a little bit cold. Um, so they will will drop. I mean, but the indoor trees as well, and so they, sometimes they don't. Um, but Zelkov is absolutely. You've got to let them. Uh, go through their natural sort of cycle. Uh, can you use systemic pesticides and fungicides on elm trees, or is it a myth they don't like them? I, I don't really ever use them, so uh, I don't really, I can't really answer that question, and I don't recommend using them either, uh, just in general. Is the pinching needed because the f initial response of the tree is to elongate after defoliating? Uh, so does it make sense to defoliate to encourage elongation? Yes. That's one of the things that we were talking about there. So, um, okay. Uh, anybody else who has any questions um, about this, you can just kind of like put it in um, the, the the Discord group uh, and things like that, uh, or contact me directly. Um, as I said, the uh, all of the streams are free. Um, but if you have found this useful, I know it, this one's been a bit of a kind of like uh, talking across purposes at, at times and it's some um, kind of like weird kind of concepts and things. Um, but it is about trying to kind of think about what you're what you're trying to achieve and the, the, the combination of, the, of the, the, those different techniques um, that go hand in hand. So like pinching without defoliation uh, only gets you so far in terms of um making ram you know the building up the ramification uh then defoliation without then the subsequent pinching of the second flush of growth doesn't get doesn't get you the the the, the uh the refinement that you want or doesn't get you the elongation that you want and so it's it's all of these kind of things that that just keep adding to each other and and and, and things that that um that are applicable with with Zelkova. but if you've got that energy within the system they will use it quickly, they will regain it quickly, and then you can just keep pushing them, pushing them, pushing them, and, and you can make quite a lot of incremental steps up within a year um, relatively quickly with them because they are that sort of uh, vigorous species. Whereas with uh, with the maples um, uh, and, and other species, you can't be that aggressive. So those are the kind of um, 
the kind of like the caveats to to to, to looking at defoliation through the lenses or through the the, the medium of Zelkova and Elms and things like that. Uh, so as I said, um, these streams are free. If you uh, found it very useful and want to donate, uh, then there's the I just put a link up there. The link will also be in the video and things like that. Uh, those people who do donate get access to um, the Discord, which is a kind of like a, a big um, forum type uh, WhatsApp group, massive chat thing uh, where questions and stuff can be answered. And I will, there were a couple of videos that didn't get used, and I've still got some footage that I need to kind of put together. That'll all be going up on there for those people um, who, you know, to, who donate uh, to, uh, to, to, to these streams uh, can, can view. Um, obviously, uh, we are looking at trying to make uh more stuff available to people and, and things like that so we'll we'll uh we'll, we'll we'll keep trying um and uh we'll see where it goes uh so the next stream is we're going to shift um the the, the the timings of the streams um so we did not uh go in conflict with with mirai live um like we did last week unfortunately uh apologies to to those um there um so we're going to be doing Tuesdays and Saturdays uh, from now on, I think, uh, unless there's anybody that's really, really uh, offended by that. Um, this Tuesday, uh, I'm not sure if we'll have one in time, uh, or if we do, it's going to be a just a proper all-out live one because I've got some, I've got stuff on uh, definitely tomorrow. Um, but yeah, uh, stay uh, posted to social media. Um, I'll try and get emails and stuff out. Um, but yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so the only other thing to, to say, really, other than that, is thank you very much. I uh, hope you all stay safe uh, and everything. Uh, and tonight's stream is brought to you, rather surprisingly for, for an ale fan, uh, with uh, Brewdog Lost Lager, uh, which, is a, which is actually quite nice. Um, it's a very tasty um, uh, drink. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to enjoy this. It's left over from, uh, from the other night having a curry. So... Um, yeah, cheers, enjoy. <laughs>